Good morning, everybody. It's Mark at MGC Custom Puzzles and Custom Made JigsawPuzzles.com. <clears throat> I just wanted to make a quick video this morning. We're going to go over a little, uh, a little bit of a, a doodle, I guess. I'm kind of in the mood to make another one, but this time we're going to make one using a black, a black area. So uh, I'm going to show you a little technique too. Instead of straight cutting in the edge of a puzzle, I like sometimes to scallop cut an edge. So scallop cutting an edge is basically, kind of looks almost like the outside of the old fashioned perforated postage stamp. So let's kind of get this blade warmed up, see how my hands are doing. And basically I, I, I put one hand over here and then kind of off camera, off to the side here, I use my right arm to just kind of rock. And actually, you know what, let's pan out so maybe you can see me doing this. All right, so we'll pan out briefly and then I'll pan in. So I just want to come in and I'm basically just going to create a scallop. <laughs> and what this is nice for is that if you want to make a puzzle that doesn't have straight edges and allows you to do certain things that hide and disguise the edge pieces to make the puzzle a little bit trickier, then you can scallop it. So there you go. This is how you make a scalloped edge. And it's just a nice, steady, even pressure and a very, almost like clock motion of a pendulum, uh, rocking motion of the wood as I'm rotating it. So now we're gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit more detail. So I refer to this as scallop cutting the edge. And I think, I don't know, it really kind of gives a finished puzzle when, when you finish solving it. It gives it a really beautiful look. And the scallops could be bigger or smaller, just like the waves in an ocean. Doesn't need to be uh, any specific style, but it probably is best that whatever you decide to do, to try to keep it as uniform as possible. And you just practice on a little bit of scrap wood in the shop if you, if you like. I've been, I've been cutting puzzles a very, very long time, so I've kind of gotten pretty decent at it out of the starting gates here. All right, so now, let's see what this looks like on camera. There you go. So now you have your scalloped edge. And we're going to come in and we're just going to maybe cut a few puzzle pieces to show how you can benefit from having a scalloped edge. So let's try that real quick. So we're going to come in here. Let's carve a couple of pieces. And I'll show you where a scalloped, scalloped edge will help you to dis, disguise that edge piece. All right, so there's one. Now, <clears throat> would you think that, let me, I just need to see that I'm on camera here. All right. Would you think that this is an edge piece? And I bet you that most, most of you would say uh, no. Now, even, even with that one cut as it is, and it's obviously not looking like an edge piece, you can still come in here, and we're gonna take the curve right here, and we're gonna just pretend that was the other curve, and we're gonna do this. Come out a little further. We're gonna envelop an interlock. So here we have two edge pieces. Two edge pieces that look nothing like an edge piece. And they need to come together to create the edge where we cut that out. So just a little fun thing you can do with scalloping your edges to drastically increase the, uh, the difficulty of your puzzle as you're making it. So now I'm kind of in the mood to do a doodle. So now that we've demonstrated that oh uh, hang, hang on for some of you though I, I think the earlet style might be <coughs> a tad bit advanced so let's uh, come in here we'll do an earlet and then I'm gonna switch over into the round style which is also quite a lovely style it has a nice smooth look to it once you get your your rounds to be nice and uniform So 
So there we go. We got a nice round style going on there. And we'll cut another piece. We'll come in over here. So if you find yourself with last year's wall calendar and you want to have some fun cutting, some of the better quality wall calendars definitely make excellent cutting material. Now, I'll warn you that that kind of art is probably copyright protected on the back of the calendar or somewhere you're going to see a copyright issue. But if you're just making the puzzle for family and friends, uh, go for it and enjoy your calendars. And as long as you're not trying to monetize it or put it on the internet as something that you're selling, then uh, you're good to go. But those calendars that have that heavier duty linen appearance uh, to the paper, they are excellent for... Uh, for cutting into puzzles and with that spray adhesive uh, technique that I talked about uh, about a week ago in one of my videos where you you spray the back of the photograph and then you spray the wood surface uh, those calendars will stick to wood pretty pretty darn well if you ever have a concern about a, a particular paper or a calendar the back side of it being a tad bit slick you might want to just gently rough it up a little bit with some rough sandpaper to kind of break up that texture or that surface if it's super smooth give it a little bit of something for the glue to kind of microscopically ooze into the paper and grab hold of it uh, that's one technique you might want to try but 3m super 77 and the krylon uh, i believe 7010 that i talked about uh, on the previous video where i uh, was showing you guys how to do the the advanced figurals and whimsies uh that that adhesive is pretty outstanding so you would uh you would do well to uh, enjoy that. And uh, all right, so let me just get this last piece in here. Now I'm just gonna do a whimsy. And what I'd really love for, I was thinking earlier today, maybe even just making a straightaway video, I'd love to know what you guys wanna see me cut. And uh, give me some feedback of what topics you'd like to see me address in my videos. I've made a few already that obviously came easily to mind. But I'm curious, now that you guys have seen me scroll a little bit, those of you that have watched uh, my channel for the last couple of weeks, thank you. If anybody's watching this and you haven't already subscribed, I would love it if you would kindly go down and click on that subscribe button. And then if you want to get alerted to updates as to whenever I, I post a video, then uh, click that bell after you click the subscribe button and click on all and it will inform you whenever I post a video. All right, so this blade is actually a tad bit on the dull side, so let's go ahead and swap it out real quick for something nice and fresh so we have a nice blade that's gonna last us for a nice long doodle scroll. And I cut with a DeWalt DW788 saw. It's a pretty decent saw, but they do kind of seem to wear out a tad bit prematurely. I don't know, I, I do a lot of hours on my saws, so maybe 5,000 hours is is the life but uh I'm, my saw is kind of starting to make some noise so i'm gonna probably be looking to change that here in a couple of weeks and get something a little quieter for you all to enjoy all right so i'm just gonna kind of scroll around here have a little fun Let's crank up the speed a little bit so i can go a little faster there we go. So yes, if you have any ideas or things you'd like to see me demonstrate, please write them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to do whatever I can do. That doesn't involve uh, using my specific technique of getting image onto the wood or my laminate, uh, but I'm able to demonstrate other ways of doing it, perhaps. Uh, I did talk about those in my previous videos. So I'm just kind of curious too, what kind of art 
would you like to see me cut? I'm a, happen to be personally a big fan of Americana folk art, like the artist Jane Lister Scott. And uh, I'm also a really big fan of some of the old masters from Europe and even here in the United States that went out west in the early days to, to paint the open country. Yosemite and Grand Canyon and places like that. I tend to like my art to be rather colorful and relatively busy. I think it lends for an amazing puzzle. Sharp contrasting lines is also quite nice, although I do sometimes enjoy also cutting softer lines on the colors. But a sharp contrasting line really lends itself towards uh, being enjoyed for a, uh, a wonderful color line cutting, which allows for a definite increase to the challenge level of solving a puzzle. This is something I like doing sometimes. I like coming, wrapping back around behind an interlock and doing another one and then wrapping back over. It has a really nice kind of feel to it. And I think it has a really beautiful artistic appearance as well. What do you think? I'm looking forward to being able to do these videos live one of these days once I get up to a thousand subscribers. I could glance up at my monitor TV right now and be able to read whatever any of you decide to type or chat live. So right now I'm just kind of sitting here by myself in my shop trying to guess what you'd be interested in seeing and hearing. Definitely enjoy scrolling this kind of stuff. Pretty much exhausted this little piece of wood. So I'll clean off this dust here. Should have a little brush handy. And there you go. We have a, a nice little doodle that I just cut. And what's really cool about this is, granted, we have the uh, the other part here that I already cut into actual puzzle pieces. But you can take this doodle and do that. Let me zoom out a touch. And we get this really kind of funky grade of art. A viewer the other day uh, sent me some images of some of her scrolling, and she likes to refer to uh, some of her neat little designs that didn't have any interlocks on them as kind of like a termite, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know, channels or termite tunnels. But this is sort of similar. And uh, if she gets to work those uh, interlocks in there, she can create something quite similar. She definitely has a skill for scrolling. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed looking at the video. And again, please leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear what you are interested in seeing me make. So, uh, I'll 
look forward to reading those. And in the meantime, I'm going to get back to doing some orders here. I have a really fun puzzle to cut. And actually, I'm going to take you quickly remote with my camera so you can see what I'm working on today. Oop, helps not to get my tripod caught. Sorry about the shaky video. But this is, uh, this is actually an adult coloring book art that I personally colored using Photoshop. And I have a nice order for this. It's going to be about a... I think about a 600 piece puzzle. I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, I printed it in the appropriate size. It gives me the area necessary to achieve the piece count I'm after. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I've already cut pretty much the whole front of the head of the horse. And uh, I hope to wrap this puzzle up by the end of the day tomorrow. Tomorrow being Sunday, the 23rd of February. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I look forward to making more videos for you soon. Have a great day.